Man, it seems you guys really love this new collection of fragrances from Zara. So many of you messaged me, sent me emails, added comments to my videos asking me to review these fragrances. So I've always mentioned that it's a bit complicated with Zara fragrances. It's very inconsistent. You can never find all the fragrances in one location. In fact, here in San Francisco, we've got several stores, Zara stores, and in the mall, we have a separate men's store and a women's store. The women's store did not have any of the fragrances I'm gonna to talk to you about today. The men's store had them, and that's where I bought them. I've got five of these fragrances. Uh, new fragrances or new wish, I think they came out around February or March and they come in either black bottles like this I mean, I'm sorry boxes I should say and uh, Kind of uh, cream colored and black boxes like this and from what I've gathered this particular series are all Givaudan perfumers and then this particular series are all Fermaniche perfumers, so I got the fragrances. I've got five of them and I'm gonna tell you all about these fragrances and do a ranked list and I'm gonna smell them on camera and let you know what I smell coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yesterday we're talking about Zara fragrances. I love Zara fragrances, but I hate that they're very inconsistent. Uh, on top of this, I hate that their sales associates know nothing about the fragrances will not even tell you where to find them. Uh, in fact, when I was buying these fragrances recently, I asked a sales associate, he wouldn't tell me where to find the others. He said there's more fragrances at the woman's uh, store. I went and as I was saying, checked, none of these fragrances were there. In fact, there were very feminine fragrances there and these ones that I have are very unisex fragrances, which they, you know, put them together with the men's fragrances. So on top of that, I searched online under perfumes in Zara's website, the USA website. These fragrances did not come up. But if you search these fragrances with their name, they will come up on their website. So, so it's very difficult to find these fragrances and buy Zara fragrances. And the fact that they discontinue fragrances all the time, I don't usually write or, or like not right, but to do videos a lot about their fragrances. But recently, I've been enjoying a lot of their fragrances, and these are pretty solid releases for 40 bucks. They're 39.90 for 100 ml bottles, and they are also refillable bottles. So you can open this up right here, and you can refill these. But where the hell are the refills? Because I don't see any refills anywhere. And my fear is these won't last too long. I, I just don't know if they don't have refills for them already and they're refillable bottles, what, what, what are they gonna do? Are they gonna bring the refills later? As you can see right here, um, it does show you that they're made to be refilled. So, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen with the refills. Nowhere have I seen refills, and I couldn't find the entire collection to buy the entire collection. So I've got five here. I have a bonus option as well, and I have the latest version of Vibrant Leather I'm gonna tell you about as well uh, after the outro. So let's go ahead and get started. The first fragrance we're gonna talk about is a fragrance created by Nathalie Lorson. As I was saying, these black box fragrances seem to be all firm and niche perfumers. And at number five, we've got Regal White, Natalie Lorsong created. Notes include coconut water, vetiver, figs, ambroxan, chestnuts. So those are the only notes they credit. And I've smelled these before. I'm gonna smell them on camera for you guys. And I've ranked it this way of how I prefer. And I've ranked Regal White at the bottom. It is kind of aquatic and somewhat marine, but a tolerable marine. Uh, it does have something weird in here that gives me that kind of marine vibe, uh, but it also has a lot of um, uh, bitterness and also kind of uh, smokiness. The, uh, the vetiver note in here is quite smoky, I think, but you've got the balance of the coconut water, which kind of is milky, uh, but maybe a bit fruity, but not quite, and there's the figs in here. I don't get much of a fruitiness too much, and then with this one, I'm getting more of a bitter greenness, uh, which uh, most likely are the fig leaves. Uh, a bit nuttiness as well, and then the ambroxan is here as well. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an unusual creation. It might satisf satisfy some people. I would call this maybe more of a woody vetiver fragrance, but definitely has that 
kind of weird aquatic vibe in here. It's quite fresh, lightly fruity, somewhat green and sweet, and a bit nutty as well. And then eventually it becomes a little ambery. We got that ambroxan, and the ambroxan is a musky note. Uh, it's to uh, uh, replace the usage of ambergris, which is very expensive. So we've got the ambroxan, and it smells musky, woody, ambery, and of course a little aquatic as well. I, I think it's a fine fragrance. I would wear it because I feel like it's a balance of vetiver and figs together with lots of uh, ambroxan. But there's something weirdly kind of marine running throughout it, so that's why I've ranked it here at number five. But Regal White... I think it's definitely wearable. Those of you that like the uh, kind of uh, woody fragrances that are fresh, I think this will satisfy you. I would also call this maybe one of those everyday fragrances could be like a signature fragrance because it doesn't really do a lot, but it, you know, it smells pleasant. But either way, Regal White, created by Natalie Lorsan, fifth place. Have you tried that one? Do you know about it? Uh, let me know. So moving on to a fragrance created by perfumer Mylene Alran. So as I was saying, the dark bo boxes are Fermanish perfumers. Uh, the this these boxes are Givaudan perfumers. So we've got my we've got two from Givaudan and three perfumes from Fermanish perfumers. But Evening Safari Drive, Mylene Alran, and these are all 2023 launches. This one uh, is uh, very woody once again but a bit more enjoyable than the previous one because that first one that I spoke about, Regal White, had a lot of that kind of aquatic, marine-leaning touches. This is all woods, so this might come off a bit boring as well because it is all woods, but it smells pretty darn good. It's sandalwood with cypress, cedar, eucalyptus, vanilla, and tonka beans. So let's go ahead and smell this one. So this might remind you a little bit of something like uh, Diptyque's uh, sandalwood fragrance. I believe it's called Dosan. Uh, it's very powdery with a bit of creaminess under there uh, and I feel like the sandalwood is nicely b blended with cypress. To me this is a really great fragrance. Uh, it also has that kind of um, bit camphoric eucalyptus mintiness like menthol like vibe in here. But it's all woods, lots of woods and you've got the aromatic touches of the woods in here with the cypress and the uh, um, eucalyptus and then the sandalwood and cedar together, so it's an overdose. There's light creaminess, not as much, very, very dusty kind of powdery woods in here. And then you've thrown in some tonka beans and vanilla to add some sweetness. It's quite pleasant, I enjoy it. This fragrance and the last fragrance do seem to be pretty far reaching as well. The next fragrance is not, it's very subdued and it's very close to the skin. Uh, and uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but if you're into the idea of sandalwood, I think this is great. I just usually find these kind of fragrances a bit boring. Uh, it doesn't really go, w you know, somewhere too much. But in the end, I think it smells great. What else I should say about this, there is a bit of a medicinal touch in here as well. And sometimes I get that from sandalwood. But anyway, Evening Safari Drive, if you're looking for a new um, a new woody fragrance, a sandalwood fragrance, definitely try this one. And it does have that light reminder of... Uh, no, I, you know what? I said the wrong uh, name from Diptyque. It's not Dosan, it's Tam Dao. If you're a fan of Tam Dao from Deep Diptyque, I think this one uh, should definitely satisfy. So, Evening Safari Drive. So, up next, going to another Fermanish created uh, fragrance, Fermanish perfumer created fragrance, I should say. It's Majestic Green, created by Fabrice Pellegrin. This is a vanilla fragrance, but it is very subdued. For me, it is not a screamer. I don't know if I'm going nose blind or anosmic to it, but I've received compliment with this one when I was at a donut shop of all places. Bob's Donuts in San Francisco has some of the best donuts and I was there and the associate there said I smelled great. So I was wearing a ton of this because it doesn't project, it doesn't have this far reaching experience and I can hardly smell it. I mean, I sprayed so much on my hands this one day that I was wearing it and it was very, very subdued. But obviously, since I received the compliment from this one, uh, the, the, the person uh, that was near me uh, was smelling it. But this is Fabrice Pellegrin created. It features notes of vanilla, cardamom, pepper, cedar, sandalwood. So in the end, it's a vanillic fragrance, but it's very spicy. You do pick up the traces of the cardamom and, cardamom and pepper. They're definitely there. Um, I feel like uh, it spices up the vanilla, and the vanilla is not too syrupy. It's on the dry side, so there's definitely a powdery element here, and it's meshed with a lot of woods of cedar and sandalwood. Perhaps it gets a little creamy with the sandalwood in here, but for me, it's not. It's 
it's not necessarily a uber creamy, milky uh, sandalwood. So it creates more of a powdery effect. And I feel like since it's a dry fragrance, maybe that's why I'm not really experiencing much of a wide-reaching fragrance. Uh, and also, it's very, very subdued. So it doesn't, it doesn't do much on me when I'm smelling it. But obviously, as I said, I did receive, I've garnered one co compliment when I was wearing this one the one time uh, that I did. And I, I was surprised. Uh, the, la the lady or the, the young woman said, um, oh, by the way, you smell so delicious. I said, oh, thank you. She goes, is that really weird to, to say, uh, to compliment you uh, about a fragrance? I said, no, I work in uh, fragrances or I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm the perfume guy if you ever want to follow me or blah, blah, blah. But it, she felt weird for telling me I smelled great, but I said, it's don't worry about it. So it's interesting that this garnered me that compliment, but it is very, very subdued. And I'm going to let you know later on when I get to the number one fragrance, how I layered this with the number one fragrance or the, the, uh, the fragrance that's at number one and it even intensified the fragrance. But either way, at third place, Majestic Green. Let's go ahead and smell this real quickly just to let you know what I'm getting from the fragrance. So when you're smelling it off the strip, the cardamom and pepper are quite strong. In fact, the pepper is stronger. Uh, very much stronger, but it, it instantly you've got the powder effect here totally. The vanilla is the powdery kind. You know what this also kind of reminds me of? It's uh, Zadig and Voltaire's This Is M. Uh, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit um, with the, the vanilla and the black pepper and the sandalwood. This kind of reminds me of that a little bit uh, with the, the added touch of the cardamom in here because it's so potent with the pepper and the vanilla. And then, of course, you've got that sandalwood and it's a very powdery fragrance uh, for me. It does smell great when you're smelling it. It's just I wish it was a little stronger. Uh, but as I was saying, let me tell you how I layer it with uh, the number one fragrance. But moving on to another Givaudan perfumer, it's Jordi Fernandez's Full Moon Over the Desert. For me, out of all these fragrances, Full Moon Over the Desert is the strongest and also has animalic touches. Uh, so this is a leather fragrance and it features notes of leather, iris caramel, sand, woods, evernil, pink pepper, and bergamot. Let's go ahead and smell it. So recently I've been noticing a lot of different fragrances from this perfumer, Jordi Fernandez. Um, man, I didn't know much about him like let's say two years ago, but as of late I'm finding a lot of fragrances that he's created. So I don't know when he came on the scene, uh, but he does do some great work and this is a great fragrance by the way. So instantly very leathery very very leathery and I feel like it's a combination of lots of leather and something like the Ambrox and Baccarat Rouge like um, DNA in here but it's intense it could be a bit animalic uh, and it's got sweet touches and powdery touches and that unique sand note is in here to create a powdery effect this is a very powdery fragrance and this particular one I, I, I feel like as I said it's the most intense out of all the five I'm talking about today and it has great longevity I, I don't think the rest of the collection has really great longevity but this one does and it's intense and I feel like it's a full finished fragrance with everything that's going on in here the Evernil in here is the oak moss note it's got some freshness but too much with the bergamot but a lot of different things the pepper i mean the pink pepper the evernil lots of woods the sand caramel to create the the, the sweet uh, sticky kind of touch here and then loads of uh, loads of leather with that iris note so this one's quite nice i do agree it is a bit animalic and it does remind me of some fragrances like let's say koyam from um, nasomato uh Producer Michael Fragrance from Fragrance Dubois. Uh, maybe a bit of, um, what's the, uh, uh, what is the, what is the uh, vetiver fragrance uh, from um, um, Marc Antoine Barrois? Maybe a little bit of that as well. Uh, because it's very leathery and those fragrances I discussed are kind of leathery. So it reminds me of that kind of leather. Of course, all the fragrances go in a different direction, but those are my thoughts on Full Moon Over the Desert. Let me know if you've tried these fragrances so far. I know some of you, as I was saying, were reaching out to me to tell me to pick these up because they're really, really great fragrances. And I'm hoping that they keep these fragrances around and they bring some, uh, you know, refills for these because as I was saying, these are definitely refillable. 
as you can see. So if you run out, you can fill it up with new juice. It's funny how I organized this list. It's like we did a Fermanish perfumer, we did Givaudan, and then we did another Fermanish perfumer, then we did another Givaudan perfumer. Now we're back to a Fermanish perfumer again. This is Anne Ayo's uh, Imperial Purple. Turned out to be my favorite of the bunch. These, I never smelled them before I bought these, so these were all completely blind. Uh, the Zara store did not have, uh, you know, um, testers for these. They have testers for others, but I couldn't find testers for these, so I didn't know what I was getting into. But when I started wearing this one, I instantly thought, okay, this is uh, their version of uh, Diorum Intense. A uh, very bright version of Diorum Intense for me, which is a great um, a, a great fragrance, obviously. Uh, more of a citrusy kind of a take on it. There's a lot of brightness here with that iris and leather. So Anne, Anne Ayo for, had a, launched a fragrance with uh, Givenchy last year called Noctambule. Really one of my favorite fragrances, and she did a great job here as well with this one. And the very first time I, I heard about this perfumer uh, was with Noctambule. So now I'm curious as to what else she's done, because she's done a great job here. So in the end, this features notes of iris, leather, woods, vanilla, cereals or grains with praline. Shall we smell? So this smells fantastic. It does remind me of Dior Homme Intense but more of a fresh take on Dior Homme Intense. Uh, it smells better than Dior Homme, the original, where it's all fresh, uh, but the iris is beautiful in here, the leather is beautiful as well, and it smells a bit less lipsticky than like Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme uh, Parfum. But it's super, super delicious. Lots of iris, lots of leather. There's woods here, some sweetness from the vanilla, a bit of dry cereally touch, and then that kind of uh, uh, sweet uh, praline uh, note that they've thrown in. But it's super fantastic. There is definitely a makeup y vibe, but I feel like it's not as strong as something like Dior Homme Intense and Dior Homme Parfum, and even less intense than Dior Homme Parfum. Uh, this one, to me, because of the brightness, I feel like there's like a major bergamot note to give you this very very bright touch when you first spray it there's this brightness which is uh, kind of ruling the fragrance until everything kind of develops and kind of settles in for you to smell uh, really great fragrance this one's fantastic that's why it's here at number one imperial purple uh, definitely a great alternative for something like Dior Homme Intense with a combination of Dior Homme, the original. Uh, I love it. So this one's definitely worth it for $39.90. If you can get your hands on it for a great alternative to Dior Homme Intense, I, I highly recommend it, as I said. So those are all that I have to talk to you about. Let me know your thoughts on this collection. Are there even better ones than these five that I'm talking about? Let me know if they're worth looking up. So up until... A few days ago, I realized that you can't search for perfume for these to come up on the Zara website. At least when I did, they didn't come up. Maybe that was having a glitch. But later on, after I picked these up from the Zara store here in San Francisco, I went to look them up by the name, and when you do that, they come up, so you can buy them. So perhaps if there are other fragrances in this collection of fragrances that you recommend highly, let me know what they are. Put a comment down below so I can find out, so I can go back and buy more and report back on these. But, uh, oh, one more thing I should say, layering these two fragrances as I was talking about. Imperial Purple and Majestic Green. I layer them together and they smell wonderful together. So this is uh, the vanilla fragrance uh, created by Fabrice Pellegrin, Majestic Green. And Imperial Purple was or is the iris leather fragrance. But since the Majestic Green is so, it's also kind of named wrong. What's green about it? But, you know, that's the, their that's something else to discuss about later. But uh, for me, because it's so subdued, it felt like it could be layered. And when you add it to the um, Imperial Purple, it kind of intensified it. It cut down the freshness of uh, Imperial Purple a little bit, and it in intensified with a woody, vanillic spiciness, which to me, the two together really smelled great. And, you know, of course, it kind of boosts up uh, the fragrance. And uh, for me, it's 
more about imperial purple layered with uh, the majestic green, but you get that kind of woodiness and also a bit sweet spiciness from the majestic green together. So that's a great combo. If you have both, try them. I think they're going to smell fantastic together and going to intensify the fragrance. But either way, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Let me know uh, what other fragrances in these collections I should pick up because they're really great values. It's just I don't think they perform as good as some other fragrances do. Um, but still, if you, you know, replenish your fragrances frequently, I think these should be fine for 40 bucks. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Of course, stay tuned for me to speak to you a little bit about Vibrant Leather, the latest version. Uh, please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about Vibrant Leather EDP, a 2018 version. Apparently, this is the 2018 version. I could be wrong because I don't think I ever saw this in 2018. I think it was always the, the kind of clear bottle. But I've had this for a while. And look at this photo inside this box. Vibrant Leather is created by Jerome Epinay. And of course, they're really like making a point of the perfumers, as you can see here. Jerome Epinay. So Jerome Epinay does fragrances for Byredo and also fragrances for Wilhelm Parfumerie, among many other brands as well. So for Wilhelm Parfumerie, Jerome Epinay did a fragrance called Morning Chess, and I feel like this is the version of the less expensive version of Morning Chess. So launched originally launched. Uh, I think in 2016, because it was in an, uh, a different bottle. They moved it into a tall bottle like this, and then now they've changed the color of the bottle as well. I don't think this is a, this is this is not a refillable bottle. It doesn't look like it's a refillable bottle. Uh, and also, this is uh, I think it's 100 ml. I think it used to be 120 ml. Yeah, this is 100 ml, and I believe it used to be 120 ml. So, um, as you can see right there, the notes, bergamot, bamboo, and the leather record. So basically, if you're a fan of Aventus, you're going to like this one. Or if you're a fan of Morning Chess, you're going to like this one. Maybe even Cedrop Boise from Mansera. This new sprayer really smells great, by the way. And in the end, it's a very juicy kind of um, uh, fresh leather. Uh, very, very fresh citrusy, leathery, spicy, woody. Uh, the bamboo, uh, there's definitely fruitiness here for sure, and it's a kind of a pineapple-esque for me, uh, but it's probably from the bergamot, although you can't really, I mean, you, you connect fragrances to other fragrances because they smell like one another, and then you wonder what they're thinking about bamboo and bergamot and leather creating this smell. I certainly get a fruitiness in here. I certainly get, a, you know, like a pineapple-y touch, uh, I certainly get, uh, you know, freshness, uh, maybe a lemony touch. So it's all, you know, kind of reminding me of all of those fragrances. But uh, definitely reminds me of Morning Chess. Uh, it doesn't smell as a, uh, I guess I should say, quality. But I think if you're looking for a great alternative to Morning Chess, I think this definitely will satisfy. Anyway, this is Vibrant Leather EDP from 2018. Uh, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.